Hey guys, welcome back to this Unchained Guide. In this guide you will learn everything that you need to know about the deck. We will talk about every card as we always do in the deck profile. I will explain to you why the cards are in there and what their function is. And then later on we will go into the combo guides. I will show you the basic combos. I will explain to you how you can use the deck to kill your opponent on your first turn, your second turn, the second turn of the game basically. And then I will also show you the Griffin Lock combo, which is an alternative combo that you can use uh, depending on the meta. And I will explain to you when you should use it and when you shouldn't. So without further ado, let's hop just right in into the guide. Enjoy. Alright guys, welcome to the Unchained Guide. You can see here the Unchained deck and as I already said, I will talk about the basic combo uh, after we have talked about the deck list and also about the Nightmare Griffin Lock combo, which depending on the meta game, can be quite nice or is maybe not that nice, but more to that later. Unchained is finally out and here you can see the list that I am currently running. Note here, the first thing to note is that the uh, Tour Guide package, which I will explain in a moment, is not a must. You do not have to play the Tour Guide package, but I would heavily um, suggest that you do because it's just really nice and gives you a strong one start uh, one card starter in the form of the tour guide from the underworld which can then summon the fiendish rhino warrior but as i already said we will talk about everything here now so the first thing that we will do in this guide is talk about every card i will explain to you what they are doing what their basic purpose and function is uh, we will obviously talk about all the unchained cards here because these are the cards that are relevant to the archetype i will not go and explain it to build tactics talents might say one or two words to that but nothing more so without further ado i I would say let's uh, start right here with the card that I just mentioned, the Tour Guide of the Underworld, right? It's level 3, you can normal summon the girl. When this card is normal summoned, you can special summon one level 3 or um, fiend monster from your hand or deck, but negate its effect. Also, it cannot be used as synchro material, which doesn't matter because we don't synchro. The thing that you will normally get with this, and I will show you this in the combo um, part of the tutor, of the the, uh, the tutorial here, is the Fiendish Rhino Warrior. Um, you can also summon other stuff like the Aruha, you can summon Rakia, you can summon Sarama, so basically every one of the basic unchained little monsters here so if you don't have access for whatever reason to the fiendish rhino warrior that is no problem you're then also able to summon one of the other ones to the field which is nice because what you basically always depending as whether you go second or you go first what you basically always want to do is get to your unchained soul lord of yama which we will talk about when we come to her but this is basically one of the first cards that you want to get into and you can see right here you need two fiends monsters to get into her so that's why the two guard from the underworld is such a nice one card starter because she's a fiend herself and can summon another fiend in the form of the fiendish rhino warrior or one of the other unchains to the field um, keep in mind though that the fiendish rhino warrior is um, nice to summon with her because specifically the fact that this one negates the effects so if you summon your for example your rakia which would normally be able to destroy something via a quick effect then rakia can't because it's negated so this is definitely the best target as you basically limit yourself if you summon the sar armor or the Rakia because their effects are negated then. So we want to summon the Fiendish Rhino Warrior which is also level 3, 1, 4, 900 and Fiend monsters you control except Fiendish Rhino Warrior cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects which definitely can come up. Keep that in mind if you have like a Fiendish Rhino Warrior uh, in your hand you could also normal summon the guy and then you have this protection effect here live. This is not why we play him but this can, cam, uh, can come up from time to time. This is basically the hidden effect so hidden referring to the effect that you normally do not use in a combo or in a deck but that is there and that a lot of people are not aware of but this is the effect of the Fiendish Rhino Warrior. Keep in mind though that on the field uh, when summoned with the tour guide it is negated. If this card is sent to the graveyard which is then it's obviously no longer negated by the by the tour guide you can send one fiend monster from your deck to the graveyard except that this one and you only can use this effect once per turn. What you will normally send is your Unchained Soul of Shalvara which we'll talk about in a moment. The guy is basically able to set you one of your traps from the deck that you want to destroy to summon more unchained monsters to the field. Obviously you could also send something different to the grave. You could also go ahead and for example um, send uh, the blue dog as we call him. So we will call this one red dog and this one blue dog and this is the big red, uh, the big blue dog and the big red dog. 
Uh, you can also send the blue dog to the grave because if he's in the grave you can summon him by destroying a card on the field. So these two cards are your basic one card starter combo. Um, the cool thing is that you can also summon the fiendish rhino warrior from the hand. It does not need to be from the deck so that's quite nice. Obviously you are playing triple maxi, triple ash blossom here. You can swap them out for any other hand trap but why would you? Because obviously these nine here, the maxi, the ash blossom and then the infant impermanence are the best hand traps in the game in my opinion. The next one that you probably should go for in the current meta is Effect Veiler, but as you can see we don't have a lot of non-engine space unfortunately, which is definitely the first thing that's a bit weak about the deck. Talking about the power level of the deck, this is definitely like a tier 2 roguish, I guess more like bottom of tier 2 deck. Um, this can be quite strong, but uh, is very bad into Maxi unfortunately, because we need to summon a lot and we are not able to basically profit from only one or two summons because there are some decks for example uh, tier elements was very famous for that being able to make the kit colors give your opponent one card and then kit colors could search the trap which the trap was an interruption then unfortunately unchained has no such thing so playing into maxi is um, very very bad and then we also don't have a lot of hand trap space in here because our engine is quite big as i already said you could uh, opt out of uh, the tour guide and uh, the finnish rhino warrior package for example in order to put in more hand traps if you think that is better but keep in mind that then the deck will be less consistent which at the moment i have to say it feels quite consistent that's quite nice so you could put out some consistency tools like for example the pot of prosperity if you wanted to or the triple tactics thrust for example but more to them when we come to them in a moment so this is our hand trap or our non-engine package here keep in mind that you always can swap that out for whatever is nice um, in the current meta at the moment um, so as i already said the next thing to put in here currently would probably be an effect veiler um, if you feel like uh, effect veiler is better than an ash blossom which i don't think it is you can also go and do it right now obviously we have the unchained twins are ruha which is our first old unchained monster but let's go about every one of them because um i guess none of you have ever played the old unchained deck because it wasn't really working so this is basically a new card even though it is not level three fiend here you can target one card you control so aruha together with the red dog um, these are definitely the most important unchained monsters i would say in general which is also why we have them at max three here you can target one card you control you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of this turn except fiend monsters also destroy the targeted card and if you do special summon this card from your hand so this is an extender also a starter that is able to special and save from the hand by targeting one card you control it can be face up can be face down this is actually quite important because some cards need face down cards uh, to destroy but you can target one of your cards and then destroy it and then this will be special summon if this card is on the on the field is destroyed by card effect except from itself basically or by battle you can special summon one unchained monster from your hand or decked except this one <clears throat> so and you can uh, use both effects one uh, each uh, so you can uh, use the summon effect and you can destroy uh, you can use the destroy effect uh, both in one turn so this is basically what every unchained monster will uh, to some capacity do if it gets destroyed it will normally um, at least the little ones summon another unchained monster from uh, the deck or hand to the field um, same as with uh, the traps here and also the wailing the spell card and with the search card the abominations prison so if you destroy any of these um, destroying is a big theme of this of the this deck you want to destroy your own cards monsters uh, spells and traps mainly the traps if you can manage so um to basically summon more monsters from your deck and then use them as material to go in strong uh, into strong extra deck monsters uh, the unchained extra deck monsters but also stuff like the dd wave king high caesar which as i already said i will explain all of them when we come to them in a moment here so we have the veiling the traps and also the search card that you can destroy to summon from the deck keep in mind this is something very important that uh, the monsters can summon from the deck and the hand but the spell traps and the other spell the continuous spell if destroyed can only summon from the deck which definitely makes a difference sometimes you have cards stuck in your hand for example the blue dog that you want to have on your field but um, you can't summon them to your field via the destruction of the traps but you will need then to destroy one of your unchained monsters so this is unchained twins aruha we have unchained twins rakia which quick effect that's quite nice here you can target one card you control destroy it also you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of this turn except fiends monsters so as you can see we are basically locking uh, ourselves into fiends with, I think, every one of the little extra deck monsters here. Um, 
this one not actually but with the Rakea and with the Aruha you will lock yourself into fiends which is quite alright as you can see we have basically only fiends in here in our extra deck and then also in the main deck uh, quick thing to note here the deck is basically at full power we are only missing the SP Little Knight which will be a way better substitution for our current Nightmare Unicorn here I will show you what this does in a moment when you come to the combo part but this deck will be more powerful in the future come the Aspen Little Knight but which deck will not so uh, I guess we have to wait for that we have the Unchained Twins Rakea here quick effect you can target this is on field you can target one card you control destroy it also you cannot special some monsters except fiends if this card on the field is destroyed by card effect or by battle then you can special summon Unchained Monster from your hand or deck so you can see this has basically the same summon effect as has the Aruha but this is not from the hand in effect but this is a quick effect from the field which can be quite nice because when you have this thing on the field and you are able to keep this thing on the field this um, basically acts like a dodge tool right so if for example you activate a very important effect on the field let's say you activate your lord of yamas search effect and your opponent targets this with an infinite impermanence or an effect veil and you have the rakea on the field then you could if you wanted to and you can afford it in terms of your combo activate the rakea and destroy in this case the yama to dodge the infinite impermanence or the effect veil this is also a very strong card if you want to kill your opponent because this is a quick effect as you can see here that can also be activated in the battle phase so you can for example attack with the rakea and then use rakea's quick effect to destroy any other monster that has um, attacked on the field and then summon a new unchained monster to the field that can still attack so uh, one thing to to keep in mind is that if this deck can get to its full combo it's quite strong and this deck has a, an easy time i would say killing your opponent the going second part of this deck is quite strong it's not hard for this deck to accrue a lot of damage onto the field uh, as you will see when i show you in the basically kill part of the combo here so this is a rakea we have unchained a twins saama which is definitely also very very good um yeah, one five one five you can target one unchained um, card in your graveyard <coughs> except this one and then set it to your field then destroy one card you control keep in mind that if you set a monster which is normally not what you want to do this one will be face down uh, which for some cards is definitely a problem um so you can see the unchained soul of shavara for example says during the main phase if this card is in your hand quick effect you can target one feed monster or one face up or face down card you control destroy it uh, so sometimes it makes more sense or to have the cards face up on the field because then you can use them to link into your extra deck monsters or to use them for your xyz monsters so setting an unchained monster face down is basically not what you want to do with this armor normally you will uh, reset your traps to the field because your traps and we will talk about them in a moment have two effects normally uh, one trap effect and then the other effect to summon an unchained monster from the deck and obviously if you have used the summon effect from the trap then you can still use the original effect from the trap so that's why resetting them with your saama is quite nice and she's also part of the combo we have unchained soul of shavara which shavara and the blue dog as well as yama are the cards that have been newly added to the archetype that definitely boost the archetype into viability once again all of the other cards are old ones unchained soul of shavara level six feet effect during the main phase if this card is in your hand quick effect you can target one feet monster or one face down card you control destroy it and if you do special summon this card but while it is face up in the monsters and you cannot special summon monsters except fiend monsters so this is also fiend locking you but not really because you can just get rid of it if this card is sent to the graveyard you can set one unchained spell trap directly from your deck unchained soul of shavara is one of the key cards very important really nice to dodge something here so basically same scenario if you have something that you want the effect to go through a fiend monster and your opponent targets it with whatever you can use your unchained soul of shavara destroy it quick effect dodge it and get the red dog to the field and then red dog can also set one of the traps when it hits the grave so i will show you this in the combo guide but what you will normally want to do early on is go to your tour guide if, uh, summon the fiendish rhino warrior then the fiendish rhino warrior remember can send a fiend to the grave you can send the unchained soul of shavara to the grave which then triggers and sets you one of your traps that you can then uh, in the furtherance of the combo destroy to summon even more unchained monsters so shavara is a really important card we will also recycle this in the basic combo back to our hand so that we have the opportunity on our opponent's turn quick effect during the main phase to destroy something because destruction basically triggers everything that we want triggered in this deck and this helps out a lot we have one unchained soul of shayama which is a very strong card also played in tournaments by the way which is also level six that is important in a moment when we come to one of the main boss monsters here the dd wave king <coughs> 
it says you can target one card you control destroy it and then you can destroy one spell trap on the field that's quite nice as the most of the unchained cards this can destroy something on your field uh, which is definitely something that you want to do uh, also in your first turn combo but this can also clear the field when you go second and you want to break your opponent's boards and then you can use this to for example destroy a face down of your opponent or maybe a floodgate that is open on the field so that you can kill in your, your opponent if this card is in your graveyard which this is not a problem you destroy your own cards you link them away for yama for rage for anguish or for other cards so these will um, basically always be hitting the graveyard where they can then activate their effects <clears throat> If this card is a new graveyard, you can target one feed monster or one face down card you control. So in this case, for example, uh, you could um, once again target the face down card um, and then you can target them, destroy it. And if you do special summon this card, but place it on the bottom of the deck when it leaves the field. So you can use the on field effect of the Shayama once per turn. And then when this goes to the grave as for example the link material for the yama here then you can from the grave use it once again to destroy something on the field remember destroying something on the field doesn't mean a minus uh, calculation for you it basically means a plus because you will get uh, the shayama back this will resummon itself and then because for example you have destroyed a trap that was set before you will get another unchained monster to the field via the trap so destroying something on your field sounds like a minus but in this deck it is not really it's the basic core mechanic of this deck then we have abominable unchained soul which is definitely the the most unimportant card here but a really nice card in breaking your opponent's board or destroying something that you need to be destroyed and this is level 8 3015 also very high attack points here so if you want to kill your opponent this can come into handy you can only special summon this once per turn if a card you control is destroyed by battle or card effect which happens a lot you can special summon this card from your hand um, note here that you can obviously also special summon this card with your unchained little guys or the traps for example so you don't need to have this in hand to special summon it and uh, if this card is special summoned, you can discard one card. This is cost. Destroy one card on the field. So this is also able to destroy one of your opponent's monsters or maybe one of your opponent's back row that hinders you in winning the game or whatever. Once per turn during the end phase, if this card is in the graveyard because it was destroyed on the field and sent there this turn, you can special summon this card, but place it on the bottom of the deck when it leaves the field. So same as with the blue dog here, they will place uh, once resummoned themselves on the bottom of the deck so that you can access them once again but they are less likely to be accessed again because they are hard or harder to find as they were in the graveyard right so if this gets destroyed by your opponent it can resummon which can be quite nice this is a body that you can use that has 3000 attack like a blue eyes red dragon so that's quite strong uh, definitely one of the more unimportant cards in the deck but still quite nice to clear something up we have one other card that i want to mention here that you can also um, decide to play if you want to i don't have him i see here uh, it's the unchained soul of disaster which i don't have in the deck at the current moment but you can play it if you want to it's not bad uh, it's level eight against 300 attack for each unchained card in your graveyard which can be quite a lot and has the effect not quick effect so this is on your turn you can target one face amongst your opponent controls immediately after this effect resolves link summon one darkling monster using only this card you control and that opponent monsters as a material so you can use this to clear your opponent's board by link summoning into a dark monster which as you can see here our link monsters here are, all of them are dark monsters besides the underworld goddess that we obviously use to clear something up and besides the nightmare griffin which is a lock so you don't want to use this uh, on a clear field you would on a clear field use the unchained abomination to clear even more of your opponent's boards if you want to kill him so you can use this to break an opponent's board but i mean you have the red dog the bit re big red dog in your deck already which basically does the same thing as we will see in a moment here so this is not really needed and unfortunately it's this a brick in your deck and you will not be able to use this effectively on your first turn so that is why i don't think this is a good idea if you ever play in a tournament where you can go best of three and side deck uh, you might want to side deck one uh, of these into your deck so you can uh, break your opponent's board more easily this would make sense but other than that i, I think in a best of one format there is no not really a situation in which you want uh, the guy here over something else that i have in the deck here at the current moment but this is also an chain card that you can use and i wanted to show you this besides uh, this one we are using every other unchained card uh, that is in existence um, but yeah then we have the um, also a package that you do not need to run if you don't want to but it's a really nice one and makes this deck even more consistent you could definitely cite if you if you want to go for more hand traps for example because you think you can't really stop your opponent off or board breakers or whatever and you are deciding on whether to put out the ddd package which is the free contacts with the ddvice king and the 
the DDD Divisor King Deus Machina X, or you don't want to craft the Ultra Rest, then I would say better put this package out um, than the Tour Guide package. The Tour Guide package is very impactful. So if you want more space, then you could put out the DD package if you want to. Otherwise, it's really nice. I will explain this to you now. We have the Vice King Requiem, which you could just set this into your pendulum zone and then you can, um, if you have a dark contract, you can destroy the dark contract and then special summon this one out to the field. And then you can just overlay uh, your DDD uh, Divisor King Deus Ex Machina onto your Vice King Requiem. And Vice King Requiem, it says it, I have to find this, it's hard to find. Uh, there it is. It gives the um, boss monster, the DDD boss monster, the ability once per turn, not quick effect, you can target one card on the field shuffle one dark contract card from your field or graveyard into the deck and if you do destroy the target then gain 1000 life points so you can use this to make this big boss monster with 3000 attack this can come in handy if you start your turn and you need to destroy one of your cards to start your combo then you can if you have access to for example this is why we are starting with triple dark contract here because the dark contract searches the vice king requiem so you don't want to open the requiem obviously this is why we have the requiem as a one-off in here but we have triple uh, dark contract because you want to start with a contract and the contract can add you a dd monster from your deck to your hand so you are then adding your vice king requiem pendulum summoning uh, or put it in the pendulum zone special summon it by destroying the contract and then you have your vice king deus machina x on your field that you can then use to for example start your combo by destroying a trap that you might have in your hand so there can be worlds in which you don't have access to your unchained monster so let's for example say you don't have a red dog or an aruha or rakea or some armor or whatever and you can't destroy one of your set for example spells or traps to start your unchained combo and um, then you can use the ddd boss monster to destroy your own card but you can also use him going second because he has 3000 attack which is a lot you can kill your opponent with the attack points but you can also use his effect to destroy a card on your opponent's field so this is quite nice in clearing your opponent's board this can also lead into uh, a zeus if you want to but keep in mind that you will be basically always fiend locked so yeah that's something to keep in mind but in theory it is possible that's why we have the Zeus in the extra deck here so this is the DDD package here uh, you will also be able with the DD Wave King High Caesar which is the main boss monster you could say and uh, when this gets destroyed you can add um, the um, Dark Contract of the Gate from your deck to the hand which is quite nice because then you don't draw this card because if you have already used your Wise King Requiem then this is a dead draw obviously so you can filter out your deck for it and then you have a discard for something else for example your abominable unchained soul which needs to discard to destroy so that's quite nice if this card leaves the field your opponent destroys it then you can go ahead and you can add one dark contract from your deck to your hand um, this is the DD package and that is what it's used for. Uh, keep in mind that also, so I'm, I'm not sure whether I will show this in the combo guide because it's not that important, but let's for example say you have the Deus Ex Machina on the field and a trap here, this is all you have, then you destroy your own trap and summon for example the Red Dog, and then obviously you have two fiends on, on your field and uh, you don't have to keep this guy around because this guy's only purpose is to destroy a card and not to keep him around, he's not really, you, you can't use his negation if Effect. So then you have two fiends on your field, which is the starting point that you always want to end up on to go into your Unchained Soul Lord of Yama. You have your Red Dog, you have your Dio's um, boss monster here, and then you can freely use the boss monster here to link summon into the Yama because you don't need him anymore. So this is also a fiend body that gives you access to your main starting place, right? Then we have uh, the Search spell, which is really, really nice. Uh, Abominations Prison, add one Unchained card from your deck to your hand. This can add everything, can add traps, can add the monsters. Really, really amazing so this is basically the rota for the archetype but can also search the traps and spells and then uh, as if this was uh, not enough if this set card is uh, destroyed by card effect you can special summon one ancient monster from your deck so you can also if you don't need the search effect for example set this to the field destroy it with for example your red dog and then start your unchained combo because obviously when you destroy this and summon another unchained monster you then have your starting point which is always to have two fiends that give you access to your unchained soul lord of yama so the search card 
got really amazing. We have a talents in here just to be able to get it with uh, the thrust if you want to break your opponent's boards. This is a nice combo to have in here. We have the thrust, by the way, um, because we can also use it to set, for example, an infinite impermanence or maybe a trap, because uh, there could be a scenario in which your opponent, so let's say you need you need a trap to start your, your place because you have a red dog in your hand and you would need a trap. Let's uh, forget uh, for a moment that this one you could also destroy to summon from the deck, but let's say you need a trap and you have a red dog. You can then activate this one to search a trap. Let's say this get ash blossomed. Then you could, for example, activate the thrust, just set one of the traps. And normally it's bad to set them because you want them in your hand to be activated. For example, the talents here, but obviously if your opponent has no monster on the field, you can't. But in this case, it's quite nice because setting the traps or for example, the search card or the whaling to the field allows you then to destroy it and summon. So uh, in other decks, it would be a problem to set the card. But in this case, it's nice because then you can destroy them to start your combo. This is why the um, triple tactics thrust is very nice in here. I don't think that we have enough space for more thrusts and I don't think we need to. It's nice to have one here because this is a nice triple package that you can use. So let's, for example, say you are going second here and you have access to your pot. Then you can look at the top six cards of your deck to find your thrust that can find you your talents or maybe to just find the talents and help you break your opponent's board. So these are three very strong one-offs. Um, it's quite nice. We have an extra deck that we can definitely uh, banish six cards from. You would not want to banish more than six cards, I would say, but you can definitely banish six cards, uh, cards from here, uh, especially because we have multiple like two-offs. You can see we have two Diddy Wave King, we have two Rage, we have two Yama, and even though those are very important cards, it's unlikely that you will need um, two of them all the time, so it's quite nice and quite convenient to banish them to get your pot uh, ready if you are missing, I don't know, a starter or you are missing a trap that you can then destroy with one of your Unchained Monsters. We have the Dark Contract here, which we already talked about, we have the Wailing, which is definitely a card that you do not need to play. You could also put this out and be a bit more consistent with 40 cards. Um, let's read this as a continuous spell. If you Link Summon an Unchained Link Monster, you can target one card on the field, destroy it. This is quite nice. It's basically never used for this purpose. The purpose is normally used for is set card is destroyed by card effect. If this set card is destroyed by card effect, you can special summon an Unchained Monster from your deck. So this is another option. Um, same as with the spell that we have just seen here and same as with the trap that we will see in a moment. Uh, another option to be destroyed and summoned from the deck, right? But you can also, if you want to break your opponent's boards and you don't need this special summon effect, you could also just activate this because if you break your opponent's boards, you will most likely link into your Yama and link into your Unchained Soul of Anguish. Um, so then you will be able to activate this link summon effect here and destroy one card on the field, which obviously helps you clear your opponent's board and win the game. We have two caught by the grave, which I think is very important because we have a big problem with Maxi. You could argue you're putting something like the Wailing out and putting a cross or designator in. Uh, talking about this, I think I like this more than the setup here. You could also put one of these traps out here and put like a cross or designator in or just go for 40 cards because this list that you're currently seeing here is high on consistency. It's very consistent. It works. You basically always have plays. So um, you are totally free and are fine to use this list and put some of the consistency stuff out or some of the engine out for, I don't know, a cross out or more hand traps if you want to. Um, though I would suggest keeping the tour guide package and the DDD package in here, even though the DDD package is way less impactful than the tour guide package is. We have called by the grave, as I already said, for the maxi. Then we have triple infinite permanence. I don't think I need to say anything here. Then we have the two traps, which are very important. This one being arguably the better one. This is why we have this at free. It says, target one unchained monster you control and one card on the field, destroy both, which is quite nice. You can destroy something uh, on your opponent's fields. You will normally set this up on your end board and obviously if you destroy stuff on your side this uh, activates cool effects so let's for example say you have um, let's say you have Rakia on your field and this uh, trap set here and you pass over to your opponent then you use the trap to destroy your Rakia and also destroy a card um, that your opponent controls and then Rakia can summon another Unchained Monster from the deck for example you could then uh, uh, we are in the opponent's turn summon the Abominable Unchained Soul and this one uh, via discarding one card would then be able to destroy another card on the field which this card is uh, though this destruction uh, is um, non-targeting. So that's quite nice. Non-targeting always very strong. There are also a lot of cards that can only be destroyed by non-targeting effects. So uh, for example, this and uh, one Unchained Monster, one of the basic Unchained Monsters in the field, um, basically means that you can destroy two cards if you are using the Abominable Unchained Soul, uh, which is quite nice in interrupting your
your opponent. And this also has the effect, um, like the other spells and the traps, if this set card is destroyed by card effect, you can special summon an unchained monster from your deck. As I already said, keep in mind, these can summon from the deck and hand, and the spells and traps can only summon from the deck, which definitely is a difference. The abominable chamber of the unchained says, special summon an unchained monster from your hand or graveyard, from the hand or graveyard, that's quite nice. Um, this can be really, really strong in giving you follow-up, can also be strong in getting one of your main boss monsters, the Sword of Rage, back to the field. If you lose them on the field or you can't get them on the field uh, via different means, we will talk about this when we come to the combo. And then obviously if this card is set card is destroyed by card effect, you can special summon one enchant monster from your deck and you can uh, use both effects. Um, you can use both effects with every card here, both of these, both of these, and this and this. So these are all the cards from the main deck. Let's talk about the main boss monster, you could say the DD Wave King High Caesar, which is awesome. You need two level six fiend monsters, which is normally always one of your red dogs and the blue dog. It uh, could also be two red dogs. Um, this is something you always want to end up on if you can, because this one is just amazing. When a spell trap card or monster effect is activated, that includes an effect that special summons a monster. So what does this mean? For example, Branded Fusion. Branded Fusion is a spell, um, a spell card that includes an effect that special summons a monster, but a lot of cards uh, are effects that special summon a monster. Uh, so this is a, an effect summon negation, not an inherent summon negation. An inherent summon negation would basically mean if your opponent summons a Diabell Star or he summons a Kashtira Fenrir or he does a Link Summon, XYZ Summon or whatever summon from the extra deck, this is called an inherent special summon, which this card could not negate. Uh, very famous, at least at the moment, in the TCG card uh, that will also be relevant in uh, Master Rule in a few, I don't know, months, I guess, when we get uh, the new Voices Voice deck is the Sour Arvis. Sour Arvis says, for example, when your opponent would special summon a monster Star, quick effect, you can turn this card to the hand, negate the special summon, and if you do, banish that card. This refers to an inherent special summon, so this could negate a special summon from the extra deck, while the DD Wave King High Caesar can negate a card or a spell trap effect that special summons a monster like Branded Fusion. You can definitely uh, negate a lot of stuff with this, and the cool thing is that uh, in order to do this, you need to detach one material from this card and negate the activation, which negating an effect is always better than negating an activation if you are not aware in the specific case of branded um, of the um, branded fusion for example branded fusion can only be activated uh, once per turn but this one negates the activation so if you negate the activation of branded fusion it has never been activated which means that branded fusion could once again be activated if your opponent can manage to get another copy to the hand so an effect negation is always better than an activation negation but that's quite all right this does not really come up that often and if you do destroy that card this also destroys which definitely makes a big difference then you you can make one other DD monster you control, gain one eight, one eight attack, it doesn't really matter. If this got a sent from the field to graphics, you can add one dark contract from your deck to your hand. The important thing here is that this is not once per turn, this is once per material. So you will make him with two materials, which means you have two of these special summon negations ready on your opponent's turn. You can make, you can negate twice, right? This is insane, this is an older card, that's why this is possible. And the other cool thing is that you will normally have your red dog and your blue dog under the uh, DD Wave King High Caesar, which means that your blue dog, which normally, keep in mind, if you have special summoned this guy via the second effect, if he then leaves the field, he will go back to the bottom of the deck but because you have detached him as material for an XYZ, XYZ material is treated differently than our monster cards on the field. There are not monster cards on the field XYZ material. So then he will go to the graveyard, which means that you can use him again on your next turn. You don't have to search him out of the deck. You don't have to waste a special summon via trap or via a monster to get blue dog back to the field. You can just start with the blue dog because he's in the grave. And then also if you detach your red dog from your DD Wave King, that means that this one will hit the grave and if it hits the grave it can set one of your traps to the field which means you can destroy the trap summon another unchained monster on your opponent's turn or you can use the trap for follow-up which is definitely quite insane so this card is really really nice then you have zeus i don't have to explain to you zeus i explained to you what the king deus machina does then we have unchained soul of rage which is the second boss monster that you will end up on or this one will most likely be in your graveyard and then reappear onto the field uh, it's a link to that you can easily make two monsters including an unchained soul monster so unchained soul means 
Unchained Soul of Shavara and Unchained Soul of Shayama. Um, these two can make this. Uh, Abominable Unchained Soul will, would also be able to make this, um, but keep in mind you will need one of these here to make this link too, but that's not a problem in the combo at all. It says, during your opponent's main phase quick effect, uh, only during the main phase, remember you can target one phase up special summon monster your opponent controls, so not a normal summon monster, they're very important. <laughs> in the TCG a lot of people seem to forget this. Immediately after this effect resolves, Link summon one Dark Link monster except this one by using only that opponent's monster and this card you control as material. That is quite nice. We can use this. So let's, for example, say our opponent special summons a Kashtira Fenrir, Kashtira Unicorn, whatever. We can then go Unchained a Soul of Rage and then link that away together with our Rage, which would um, basically come up to a Link 3, which then we can, and this is our um, basic target, go into a Nightmare Unicorn. Then you can discard one card with a Nightmare Unicorn and spin an additional card from your opponent's field back into the deck. So um, this one basically gets rid of one of your opponent's monsters and then you have another spin with the Nightmare Unicorn. As I already said in the future, we will have the SP Little Knight, which uh, when she is summoned with the Rage, uh, she is then able to target uh, one card in your graveyard, your opponent's graveyard, your field or your opponent's field and banish it well, without you having to discard one. And then the SP Little Knight has a nice additional effect. So in the future, we will get basically a power crap version of this one here that we can use as our main target for our Unchained Soul of Rage. So Rage, really, really nice, but keep in mind this is um, the ability is on your opponent's turn, so you can't do this on your own turn. This is quick effect during your opponent's main phase. We have Dark, which is like a no-brainer. We have a lot of Darks in here, so we can easily make a Dark and then use the Dark to steal something from our opponent's grave. Keep in mind, though, that this actually is a spell caster, so uh, you are basically um, need to to be aware of the fact that if you use the effects of uh, the, the main Unchained monsters here, you will probably yoke yourself out for the turn of summoning the Dark. We have Muckraker from the Underworld, which, yeah, this is just a good Fiend card that you will also use in your Griffin combo that I will show you. But other than that, this obviously is able to, via a discard, revive a Fiend from uh, the graveyard, which is just quite strong. We have Unchained Soul, Lord of Yama, one of the new cards here. 2000 attack link to two Fiend monsters, which is so easily made. This will be good in a lot of future fiend decks uh, that are to come to master rule in the future. If this card is a special summoned, you can add one unchained monster from your deck or graveyard to your hand. So from the deck or the graveyard, an unchained monster this is super nice. And then this has more really nice effects. If a card or cards you control is destroyed by battle or card effect, where this card is in your graveyard, where it will most likely always be, you can banish this card and then special summon one fiend monster from your hand or graveyard. Then you can destroy one card you control. This destruction of one card you control is not that important, but the ability to resummon or add back to the hand one of your fiend monsters is very very strong now, this is also the reason why uh, there is an unchained package consisting of the lord of yama two or three uh, one red talk and one uh, escape of the unchained in labyrinth which i will also make a little guide for how to use the new labyrinth version basically but this is one of your core cards that you always want to go into um, also if you want to kill your opponent because this gives you access to another unchained monster which in most cases will be Aruha or will be your Red Talk, depending on what, on what you are missing because remember the Red Talk and the Aruha are the both Unchained monsters that can be special summoned from the hand via quick effect. So if you have used up your normal summon, for example, for the tour guide to get into your Yama, then you can then use these guys here to extend and you can search them with your Lord of Yama. Then we have talked about the Nami Unicorn and its role. We have Unchained Soul of Anguish. Two plus monsters, a link three here, including an Unchained Soul monster. So once again, you would need the Rage or the Red, Blue or the Yellow guy, if you want to call him that. And the Unchained Soul of Anguish is basically the same as the Unchained Soul of Rage, um, but on your turn. So you can target on the face amongst your opponent controls. This is on your turn now. Immediately after this effect resolves, Link Summon one Dark Link monster. Except Unchained Soul of, Soul of Anguish by o using only that opponent's monster and this card you control as material. If this card on the field is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can target one Fiend monster in your graveyard except this one added to your hand. I forgot about this. I uh, do remember because uh, this one has basically the same second effect. If this card is on the field, it's destroyed by battle or card effect. You can target one fiend monster in your graveyard and add it to your hand, which uh, does come up in the main combo and is super nice. If they get destroyed, you will get follow-up for that. So you can use this one and you will most likely always use this one on uh, breaking on your basically your first turn. If your opponent went first to break your opponent's board, you can obviously uh, make an unchanged 
sort of anguish and then make a link summon with your opponent's monster into, for example, a Nightmare Unicorn or into the boss monster, the Unchained Abomination, which is not the most important monster in this deck here. But in the case of breaking your opponent's boards, this is very impactful and important and you will most likely always make him with the Unchained Soul of Anguish. All right, we have the Nightmare Griffin, which um, this is a variation that you can use to the Griffin lock to lock your opponent out from activating monster effects. If this card is Link Summoned, you can discard one card and then target one spell trap in your graveyard, set it to your field, but it cannot be activated this turn. Then if this card was cool linked when this effect was activated, you can draw one card. Could you make a longer sentence here? No. So what cool, what is cool about the thing is that if this card get Link Summoned, you can, for example, reset one of your Unchained traps here and then also draw a card. So it's basically a set for free if you want to call that because you are discarding one and then drawing one. But that's not why we are playing this guy. You can only use this effect once per turn. Special summon monsters on the field cannot activate their effects unless they are linked, which definitely can be impactful, but isn't always. This has a 2-5 attack. So, for example, if your opponent has no link-heavy deck, then it can be quite difficult for him to play the game. Obviously, he can just go infinite impermanence, this guy, if he wants to, or he can battle over this. For example, uh, Kashtiva Unicorn with 2-5 attack would be able to battle over this and then just play the game, which in my opinion is the reason that at the moment you should not go for the Nightmare Griffin lock. This is really meta dependent. If you are seeing a lot of decks that um, want to use little monsters that activate effects um, in order to basically um, get to their main strategy, then this can be quite, quite nice. So you could argue that this is nice against Snake Eyes. Um, but Snake Eyes can also just go ahead and make Link Monsters that can then provide uh, arrows here. And then your opponent can obviously use these arrows to place his own special summon monsters in. And then they can activate their effect, right? Um, so this is something to keep in mind. This really depends on the deck that you are playing against. So I guess Nightmare Griffin is an option. I will show you the combo, but it's not that important. And then we have the main boss monster, the Unchained Abomination, uh, Link 4, 3000 attack. And you will most likely always make this with your Soul of Anguish, because obviously you can then just use one of your opponent's monsters to make this, which is basically a plus one. If a card or cards on the field is destroyed by card effect, which always happens, uh, except by Unchained Abomination, except during the demo step, you can target one card on the field, destroy it. When another monster is destroyed by battle, also your opponent's monster, you can target one card on the field, destroy it. During the end phase, you can target one card on the field, destroy it. So if you want to break your opponent's board and you make this guy here, it's obviously super, super nice because it's quite easy to destroy two cards with this card. You just have to destroy one card on the field. So, so let's, for example, say you make the guy here on your opponent's or on your turn uh, via your opponent's board with the anguish, right? And then you summon your abominable unchained soul. He discards a card and destroys something on your opponent's field. Then this guy will trigger and destroy another card from your opponent's fields. Uh, then you go into the battle phase and with the second effect, you battle over one of your opponent's monsters. It gets destroyed and then you can once again destroy a card on your opponent's field. And during the end phase, if there is an end phase, you can also use this to destroy uh, one card on your opponent's field. But obviously you want to kill him this turn. So the last one isn't really that important. But uh, for clearing the opponent's board and killing your opponent, this is quite nice. And then we just have an Underworld Goddess of the Closed Worlds in here that you can just go ahead and make if you have a Towers monster or if your opponent has a Towers monster on the field. This is a quite swarmy deck, so you it's not that hard to get a lot of bodies onto the field that you can then use for a Link Summon for the Underworld Goddess. Um, but you could also just put her out if you want to put something else in here. But I think this list, as it currently stands, it's a really nice one. It's definitely tacked more to the consistency side here, as I already said. Uh, putting out the DDD package or the uh, tour guide from the Underworld package or for example another trap or the spell card here would make it uh, less consistent but you would then be able to put in and I guess this is something that I will do putting this one out for a cross out that makes sense in my opinion um, you could then for example put more hand traps in it always makes sense in my opinion to maybe put a Nibiru in here if you are playing the Maxi because if you then Maxi your opponent that means that at some point you might be able to draw into a Nibiru which can sometimes just stop the place of your opponent if you for example make a or throw a Maxi and then you draw into an ash, you use the ash, but you have not stopped him. And then you draw, I don't know, an infinite impermanence, but you might have cards on your field already. Uh, then it can be quite hard with the Maxi to stop your opponent and you can't interrupt him. But if you then draw a Nibiru, that can sometimes be very, very nice. So we have talked about all the cards in the deck. Now it's time that we hop on over to the solo mode where I show you the basic combos and explain to you how you can use this deck to kill your opponent.
All right, guys, let's talk about the basic combo that you normally want to do. There are different versions, but uh, the idea is basically always the same. And I will show you this with a tour guide from the Underworld start. But keep in mind, this can also be done with a different start. You could also have, for example, one of the cards that if they get destroyed, you can summon from the deck. So let's, for example, say this hand in particular could only use the tour guide version, but you could also set this, uh, this prison here. And then let's say you would have an Aruha in the hand or the Red Dog then you could just destroy this, uh, summon uh, an Unchained Monster to the field, and then you would also have two Feed Monsters on the field, which enable you to go into your full place. But let me show you the full, full combo. You go to a get from the Underworld, and as I already explained in the deck profile, you summon the Fiendish Rhino Warrior, which now you have two Fiends on the field. This is what you normally always want to start up with. Two Fiends on the field is what you want to achieve. This is also a good point to interrupt your Unchained opponent if you can. If you can get rid of like Fiend Monsters on the field and they can't access the Yama, then it's already quite hard for him to play the game. We are summoning the armor and now we can chain block here because in the graveyard the rhino will activate and this one will search. So this one sends one to the graveyard, this one searches one and depending on which situation you are in, uh, one could be more important than the other one. In my opinion, at this current point, uh, the, it would be more important to get the effect of the Yama through because we need another monster in the hand that we can destroy something with. We have something to destroy, which is the prison already in hand, because you have to understand that the Rhino, via sending the Red Dog, will basically set you a trap here, which is a thing that you can destroy. And this here searches you a thing that can destroy. So whatever you are missing is the one that you should, uh, should, uh, should, uh, should chain block for and should search. Sorry. So in this case, we have the thing that wants to be destroyed, but we are missing a card that destroys. So let's chain block the Soul Lord of Yama in this case. So we are going Yama first, and then we are going Fiendish second here. And as you can see, you can now send a Fiend to the grave. As I already said, sometimes it makes sense to send the Blue Dog if the Red Dog, for example, is already used, or you have a Red Dog in the hand that you will use. Um, now we are sending, this is the most normal send that you will do, the Red Dog, which now you can search with your Yama here. In this case, um, we have normal summoned already, so we need to go for either the Aruha or another Red Dog here. Keep this Red Dog in the graveyard because we will re-add it to our hand. Uh, in my opinion, it makes more sense to use the Aruha here because we could use the Shavara from the hand, but the graveyard effect is already used. So let's grab the Aruha here, which is what you normally will grab here. Then uh, the Shavara will activate to set one of the traps or the spell, which all can be destroyed to special summon. We will set the Escape of the Unchained. You could also set the chamber which makes for a bit of a different end board. in my opinion the escape is better even though the route with the escape on your opponent's turn is a bit more complicated and maybe a bit more so so with the escape you um, have the ability to destroy a card on your opponent's turn and if you would set the chamber which can uh, summon a fiend monster from your field uh, it's more safe to get into your boss monster but i will explain this to you in a moment when we get there I activate the Unchained Twins Aruha, as you can uh, remember maybe from the deck profile, this can now destroy one card on the field to special summon itself. We will destroy the trap, we don't want to make C here, um, or let's say um, we will make C in a moment because then we don't have this trigger all the time. We have destroyed the trap which now enables us to special summon to the field. What you normally want to special summon here is the blue dog and that is why sometimes it can be important to destroy a monster here because if the blue dog would be in the hand then we would have a problem we can't summon him with the traps and the spells but we would then need to summon him with the monsters let's activate the maxia so we are just not uh, annoyed by this anymore so this is the position that we are currently right in here so what we will do next just because we want to use the blue dog's effect we will activate blue dog to destroy aruha and what's really nice here in master rule is that that you can always check via these little um, things here. You can always check whether you have already activated the effect or not. In uh, the real life game, it's way harder. We will destroy Aruha. So we have now destroyed Aruha. Aruha will now activate to summon an Unchained monster from hand or deck. As you can see, we could summon the one from the hand here, but we don't want to do that. Next one we are going to summon is the Sarama. And now we have this situation here on the field. What we are going to do now is link into our blue dog, which is one of the cards that we want to have on our end board. We will use our little blue dog for that. And now we have a little blue dog's effect in the graveyard to activate destroy a card on the field and then resummon itself. This is not what we want to do at the current moment. We will activate Sar Armor, which can target one unchained card in our graveyard, set it to the field and then destroy one card on the field. Um, we will reset the trap here, which this is quite 
quite nice. You could also, if there is, let's say the other trap would also be in the grave. And let's say we have not activated the other trap, right? Then you could also, with the Shah Armor, uh, set the other trap, destroy the other trap, because now I need to destroy something here. And then the other trap would obviously trigger and I could summon another monster to the field. Don't destroy this right now because it already has activated. In this case, and this might seem a bit counterintuitive, uh, we will destroy the Rage. And Rage can now activate. As you can see, we now have the trigger for the uh, Soul Lord of Yama to banish itself and resummon a Fiend monster. This is what we want to do on our opponent's turn. This is how we want to resummon the Soul Lord of Rage. Uh, Soul of Rage, sorry. So don't activate this right now. Activate the Blue Dog. This will get us back the Red Dog to the hand. I talked about this. We don't want to activate this right now. I talked about this in the deck profile. And you saw here that we could now um, trigger effect activate the Unchained. Uh, abominable soul because something was destroyed. And now we have the ability on our opponent's turn during the main phase, if this got us in your hand quick effect, to destroy something, for example, our trap here, or if we end up on another unchained monster, we could also destroy our unchained monster. And then we would meet the trigger condition for the Yama, and Yama could then re-summon the unchained soul of rage from the graveyard. So in the perfect combo, we are putting the rage to the graveyard because it adds us the red dog to the hand, which gives us destruction ability on our opponent's turn because otherwise obviously our opponent basically needs to control when to destroy something so let's for example say we would have already used the trap or the trap was not there then we would not have a single way to make a destruction happen right then our opponent would need to attack here in order to trigger our yama but with the red dog in the hand we can control when we want to destroy something which is why we want to add him back to hand the other reason that we want to put this into the graveyard and then summon this on our opponent's turn is that in the graveyard it's somehow safer, right? So if your opponent, your opponent starts with, I don't know, Dark Ruler or something, the Dark Ruler will not hit the blue dog here, but we will be able to resummon him then. So we are basically um, layering our interruptions. We are putting some of the interruptions on the field and some of the interruptions in the graveyard to access them later. This is um, The idea is the same as with Snake Eyes or Fire King Snake Eyes, where you have the Promethean Princess in the grave. With Fire King, you will see this in the future. You have more stuff into the grave that you, you will then be able to resummon on your opponent's turn. Um, just spreading out your stuff so that, for example, cards like Evening Match cannot hit you that hard. Um, the next thing that you Want to, we want to do, this looks a bit weak, but we are close to our end board. We will activate the blue dog from the graveyard. This now needs to destroy. We can destroy the Sa'ama because remember, the Sa'ama has not yet activated its effect to summon something from the deck when it gets destroyed or from the hand. Yeah, now we can once again trigger this. We won't. We want now activate the Sar Armor here, and then um, we won't. Don't want to chain here. We will want to summon another Red Dog from the deck, because now we have two level six monsters. And just one important thing here: if you're playing against Unchained, the point uh, at which you want to use your Nibiru is exactly this point when your opponent has two level six monsters on the field, because the next thing you can do, uh, or the the Unchained uh, player can do, is go into the DD Wave King High Caesar, and at this point, this one could uh, negate and destroy a Nibiru. So this is the last point where you can Nibiru your opponent if you're playing against Unchained. Now we have the DD Wave King High Caesar on the field, which is super, super nice. Another cool thing that you could do with the Red Dog in your hand is, for example, let's say your opponent... I don't know, activate, activates a branded fusion and you go Ash Blossom. And then your opponent could, for example, activate Triple Tactic Talents and uh, try to steal your Caesar. What you can then do, because you don't want to give him this special summon negate, because then you could, for example, negate your Yama here and then you cannot resummon the Rage. What you can then do is you activate your Red Dog, destroy this because this is also a Fiend. This goes to the grave, you summon your Red Dog and then he has to steal your Red Dog, which does nothing. And then also in your grave, the Red Dog will trigger to set a trap and your Yama will trigger to resummon, for example, in this case, the Rage. So this is actually the board that we are ending up on. Obviously, we could now use the Abomination's Prison to search the other trap to make it a bit more safe, because obviously if our opponent now has a Caught by the Grave on our turn and we want to resummon our Rage with our Yama, he could go Caught by on the Rage and banish it, and then we won't be able to resummon it, or he could also just Caught by the Yama, which would be even better. So the trap, for example, and let me just quickly say it, uh, but don't get confused here. This is not part of the basic combo. I, I'm now basically just adding this to our end board here. The trap would obviously now allow us to have two ways to resummon the soul of rage. Um, the thing is, 
that this is not really a problem um, because we will normally be able to get the Shavara to the field. So with this, we are passing over to our opponent and we are now going to ignore the other trap here. We just have to have to hope that our opponent does something um, that we can uh, destroy so that this even makes sense because this is obviously, this is obviously uh, an opponent. Um, here activate Zogan. Okay, okay, because I, I do want to, to show you what we are basically wanting to do here. So I think he will pass over to us in a moment, so let's just wait. Um, it wants to change this to face down position. Okay, let's just let's just show let me show you what what we are wanting to achieve here. So the red dog in the hand can now quick effect. Uh, let's let's try to not get this face down. Okay. Um, normally you will destroy something else um, because this is the base base combo. You might have one of one uh, unchained monster on the field here, um, or you could just destroy your escape of the unchained here. So let's just do that and destroy the escape. Um, and we will allow this to basically be flipped down. So we destroy this one here and then we summon the red dog. This will now get face down. We could have also destroyed this one. And now that we destroyed uh, the escape of the Unchained, um, two triggers are ready, right? We have the escape that can summon something from the deck and we have the Yama that can resummon our rage from the grave. So let's let's um, make this chaining first and the other one the second because then we can chain block the most important effect, which is the, the Yama um, summoning something from the graveyard. And what you can now do is you can with this now summon, um, and in this case you can't because we have it in the hand already, but what you would normally summon now is uh, the uh, Abominable Unchained Soul here. Then you could discard another card to destroy a card on your opponent's field. In this case you might want to summon Rakia because Rakia can destroy something else if he wants to, and then we can resummon the Rage. The other cool thing about resummoning the Rage here, and now you could destroy one of your cards, which now we could for example say yes to this, destroy our Rakia that we have just summoned, and then activate Rakia. And Rakia obviously can um, summon this one from the hand. Um, but we could also, as you have just seen here, we could also have used Rakia to summon something else. And this one always triggers when something is destroyed. So as we have this in hand, we basically can circumvent the fact that we would need to summon it from the deck. We can then destroy something on our opponent's boards. And obviously our rage is now ready to fuse away into a Nightmare Unicorn with one of our opponent's monsters. The other cool thing that you can use the resummon for the rage um, from the graveyard for is, um, don't put it in this zone, by the way, to not put it in this zone but to don't have it in this zone here because if your opponent uh, plays uh, an anima he could for example go i don't know snake i actually have a one monster whatever go into an anima place it under your rage and then just uh, steal your rage so if you just place your rage in your main monster zone and not in this uh, special special zone here, but in this one this one or this one um, then you can protect it from this obviously so what we now would have available i don't think our opponent yeah he just goes battle phase but i think you do understand that at this point I could also use this special summon uh, or a special summon monster from our opponent, this is obviously the bot, to go into our Nightmare Unicorn and spin something else. So this is the base combo that you want to end up on. If you can't get to your complete combo, it's obviously also okay if you just keep your Unchained Soul of Rage on the field. So this would be a shorter combo, but you could obviously also just end up on your DD Wave King High Caesar and your Unchained Soul of Rage. You don't need to put him to the graveyard, but if you don't put him to the graveyard, you won't get your red dog back to the hand, and then your interruptions are basically more open on the field. It's also more open to be infinite impermanence, right? So if your opponent wants to infinite impermanence this, because this can only activate in the main phase, um, then obviously if your opponent first has to play into your board and place cards on the field, um, then he can't imperm this because this will only come to the field later. This is why we are hiding this in the graveyard. But this is the basic combo that you normally want to go for. Um, I can also show you a, a variant uh, that you can use uh, if you do not have the tour guide from the underworld because it is a bit different then. But this is what you want to go for basically. And this will generate a lot of follow-up. This will uh, give you the ability to destroy a lot of cards. And obviously this one would normally be not be face down and be able to destroy uh, and negate special summons. So let's hop on right over to another situation and I will show you what you can do if you do not have the tour guide. This is a good example for a hand that you do not have a tour guide in, but you can obviously play. We have two different ways to play. We could obviously search something. We can also set this and destroy this. We also have the trap, so we have two things that want to be destroyed, and we have one thing that destroys. So you can always scan your hand via this metric. 
uh, do we have something to be destroyed and do we have something that destroys we have that so we can play uh, let's start with the trap here so this is basically the way that you start your place um, if you do not have the tour guide you set one of your destroy cards and then you activate your destruction card in this case Shavara we destroy this um, Shavara is a really nice starter and now we can activate the trap here in order to summon from our deck in this case I would say we summon the blue dog uh, obviously we could make a DD wave king high caesar now um, but in this case we won't uh, now the next thing that you basically always want to do is make the yama here um, which is okay at this point we are basically foregoing the destruction effect of the blue dog on the field for now this is also quite fine and once again uh, we have this chain block ability here once again think about what you really need here in this case um, it doesn't really matter because this card can search as uh, a destruction card but this card can also um, be a card that wants to be destroyed right so we basically have everything in the hand um, so in this case um, you will most likely in this specific situation always go one two because the red dog obviously sets from the deck and setting from the deck is way harder to interrupt than sending to the graveyard remember that the um, the rhino warrior was sending to the graveyard which is obviously is obviously something that you can ash blossom but setting to the field you can't ash blossom so in this case you can always think about um, what you want to chain block by what I just told you. Do you have a card that destroys or do you need the card that needs to be destroyed? But in this case, you always want to go 1-2 because this can't really be negated. It can be negated, but not really. So now we have this options here. Um, we have already destroyed the chamber, so we definitely want to set the other one, right? Because we can't destroy it again. And then we have different options here. We have a normal summon left, which normally you would always go for the Arua here because Arua doesn't, um, doesn't like cost you a normal summon and is then able to destroy something. You could also um, decide to go for one of the other ones, but we will most likely get, for example, to the Sar Armor, and we might also be able to get to the Rakea. Um, we will actually, because we can search Rakea. So in this specific hand scenario, because we have the Abominations Prison, um, we will go for the Aruha, but uh, you will basically always go for the Aruha because you might have already used up your normal summon here. So there is our next thing to be destroyed, and here's our destruction card. So actually Activate the destruction card, destroy something here, and now we are summoning the guy. And we activate this now. The next thing that we want to summon here is the Sar Arma. And now we can, let me think about this quickly here. We definitely need to uh, keep the blue dog in the grave for the moment because. Um, the next thing I want to do here is make a link free, right? Um, so the rage here. But if I use the blue dog for that, then I have the problem that I can't get the blue dog out of the graveyard again. I can only get him one of, out of the graveyard once and I need him for the DD Wave King. So in this case, I would go for this one into this one. And uh, obviously we are foregoing the destruction effect of the Arua, which is a bit sad, but the situation calls for it. We could have also used Abomination's Prison here to get into the Rakea. Rakea destroy the Arua and summon something to the field. Doesn't really make a big difference as we will see here in a moment. Now we are basically in the situation that we have been before. We activate our Sarama, destroy the Rage, uh, resetting the escape, which makes uh, more sense now because in the end, we will be able to use our Abominations Prison to normal summon a Rakea, which has a quick effect to destroy. We destroy the Blue Dog here, and once again, this is basically common line here. We uh, at this point, you could also decide. So, so we have, this is the same situation that we were in before, right? You could also decide to activate the Lord of Yama now and resummon this now to the field. Um, this is just preference, right? I do like it more to have it in the graveyard but you could argue with double called by being there it might make more sense to not do it that way keep in mind that if your opponent nibiru's you now then it would be way better having this in the graveyard and not having this on the field destroyed by the nibiru so now let's just go for the basic line here we will activate this but you could do this and uh, add uh, the red dog back to the hand which is basically always what you want to add makes the most sense and then um, we are basically back in the standard combo you destroy your shower armor uh, resummoning the blue dog keep in you want the blue dog on the field because now we can activate the armor's search effect here and get another red dog onto the field not the one from the hand but one from the deck now we can go for our dd here 
And so you can see this is basically the same. Um, and if you would have done, so what we can do with this specific hand here is now search for the Rakea, normal summon the Rakea, and then we have uh, another quick effect destruction on our field ready. And now we obviously also have at this current point um, a body on the field that we can destroy with the escape of the Unchained. Another thing that you can do obviously is on your other combo that I just showed you in the beginning, that you resummon the Unchained Soul of Rage on your turn and then or you keep it on your field on your turn and then you also have something directly on the field ready to be destroyed with your escape of the unchained um, and then you could just resummon the blue dog that you have destroyed with the escape of the unchained with your yama also an option um, but if you are a beginner with this deck just stick to the option i just showed you we're obviously going to set the infinite impermanence here and now we have the ability to as i basically showed you or told you in the deck profile we will quickly um, skip over to our opponent so i can show you what i'm mean here let's say he goes yeah let, let him add here obviously we could negate this but just want to show you what i'm what i'm talking about here he goes zogan and that's nice we don't want to destroy now um, and one more card here okay let's now do it we are going to activate escape we can target rakea here and we let's destroy this one here so this happens now we have multiple triggers so the first that we want to activate is this one to get back our um, Soul of Rage onto the field. And then we also want to activate Rakea. This time it works <laughs> because this time the Destruction Unchained monster is still in the deck. Um, and now we can summon him and we can resummon the blue dog this time around and put it here, put it either here, here or here. And now we can also destroy one of our own cards, which we don't want to do. Now we have the trigger of this card, discarding one card. In this case, you would definitely discard the red dog and keep the ash blossom, obviously, and destroy another card here. And now keep in mind, obviously, we can now set something else uh, as follow up for next turn. In this case, might make more sense to set the chamber because chamber can one be destroyed, but can also just resummon, right? So the other one can only destroy. But if I want uh, uh, some starter monsters on my turn, um, then it makes more sense to have something that resummons something, obviously. And uh, let's say it was still our opponent's turn, then we still have the two extra summon negates, the special summon negates, and we still have our Soul of Rage to go into a unicorn, uh, fuse away or link away with one of our opponent's monsters and spin something back, right? So this is basically what you always want to do. This is basically always the same but you have to use your bodies in a bit of a different way we might jump into some test hands after i showed you every important one let me next show you what you can do to break your opponent's board to win the game basically all right, we are trying with this hand. Obviously, our opponent has not done a lot here, so there could be a more complicated situation, but it's all right. We can definitely achieve this. Um, a different, uh, we can we can start with a few different lines, right? So once again, check your hand for a card that can destroy and cards that want to be destroyed. We have both. We could also search for that. We can now activate the Wailing here. This will probably not come up because I think at the point we will activate this, there will already be no cards on our opponent's board, but we will see. So I think um, what you want to do do here so the starting play uh, it's very nice to have the rakia still on the field for the battle phase as i already told you obviously this is the thing that we want to be destroyed and i personally would probably start with uh, prison here so we start prison and try to get a red dog to the hand uh, could be the case that we get ashed here we would have a called by for that but we can then also still normal summon rakia and rakia can destroy the trap so if we get ashed here it's all right but we obviously would not or have not been ashed here because it's just the the computer so we go for the red dog here then we can summon to the field in this case doesn't really super super matter um, but i think we can because whatever we summon here keep in mind we will have to use or you don't have to use but in this case we will use for our soul lord of yama because normally you would want to climb up into our anguish here so we will at this point use our blue dog here which uh, keep in mind if you wanted to destroy this back row here you could now do this we can for example destroy the wailing to destroy the back row um, but we will link summon now and this will also give us the ability to destroy something and then keep also in mind that you can resummon the blue dog later on from the grave and then you can still use blue dog's effect to destroy for example another potential back row that is at this 
this point not there. Like in the first starting combo, we want to go for our Yama because Yama is just link climbing up into our big red dog that can go into a big boss monster. And now we can see we have triple triggers here at this specific point. So let's say we want to destroy, let's say we are destroying this one. We're keeping this one because we want to link summon with this. You can also imagine um, being that the opponent has way more cards on the board. Then we can search with the Yama and we can chain block this with the ability from the red dog to set the trap. Um, red dog is basically always what we want to search here with the abomination prison for the start oh he summoned something that's nice i like this name we can we can destroy more things that's cool so summon summon go ahead uh, we have used the summon trap already so we are setting the other one and remember it can only destroy or summon once each trap and now as always the next thing we want to add here is our aruha because we have rakea in hand that we can normal summon and which is really nice in the battle phase so obviously it's aruha it does not uh, like cost us our normal summon here we destroy this with the wailing now the wailing is useless we could destroy it if we wanted to we activate this you basically know the drill i think you understand what the deck wants to achieve at this current point you just have to understand how to chain the different uh, monsters together obviously if we could uh, it would be very nice to get into um to get into a hiking caesar early just to be able to block a potentially biro and thinking about our position that we started in i think we could have just done that because as you remember we have started with a red dog and a blue dog we could have made the um the High King Caesar, which also has 2-8 attack, which is a lot. And then we still could have had... There was the trap, uh, but the Red Dog is then under the Caesar, which then he doesn't set us a trap. But we could have set this Abominations Prison, Normal Summon Rakea, destroy it, summon... Uh, I think this now we we would miss a few bodies here for that to be oh no it would work right because we would have Rakea and something else that goes into Yama and then we can search red dog ah I, i'm not sure if that worked but if you can manage it because you have a lot of bodies and a lot of extension then you can also try to establish on uh, early on a dd wave king caesar just to be safe from nip right if you kill your opponent um okay so where were we we have destroyed uh, the trap with the aruha right so the next logical thing to go into um combo line wise would be the sarama to reset something in this case sarama is not super useful because um, the ability to reset a trap is not that important. We want to kill our opponent uh, after all and not just like set a trap. So let's just say we want to go for something more sensical. Then you would at some point definitely go for the Abominable Unchained. Uh, then you can obviously activate its effect. Discard a hand card. In this case, let's discard this and then we can destroy a card on the field, right? So we have a 3000 attack body, which is very, very nice. And now we have this on the field here, which we can now normal summon our Rakea, which you can also do now if you wanted to. So the next thing and the next logical thing to do here is to use your Red Dog because your Red Dog is another interruption. So just keep in mind, we have used the destruction interruption of the Wailing destroying one card. We have used the Abominable Unchained Soul destroying one card. We still have the Blue Dog and the Graveyard that we can uh, get back to the field and destroy one card. So um, let me just uh, we would have to yeah we could for example just destroy the aruha here get the blue dog back to the field and then the aruha can summon something else in this case it makes sense to in my opinion it makes sense to summon the red dog because it has 2000 attacks so uh, even more attack points on the board and you can already see we have 10500 on the board but we can still continue right we could also just use the blue dog now to destroy this one and destroy another set card we could also destroy uh, another of our unchained monsters to summon another unchained monster to the field but if you want if you can manage it you can also just save your rakia i will show you in the battle phase why this can be very nice so the next thing the next like like board destruction thing that you have available uh, to you in uh, clearing your opponent's boards is the red dog right i talked about this in the in the combo guide you in this case i guess you want to use this will go back on the bottom of the deck and this one has already been activated. I guess we are using the Red Dog here because um, we do not want this on the bottom of the deck if we, can, if we can somehow avoid it. And now we can use this effect to get rid of another card of our opponent's board and make our big boss monster here, which keep in mind, if we now destroy something, which you could have 
saved this blue dog's destruction until this point. Obviously, destroying a set um, back row earlier on is more safe because then you are rid of the back row and you know what lay there. Uh, if uh, you keep extending into a board where uh, there are a lot of back rows, then you could be surprised by something like a Darumakama cannon from Labyrinth or something. But we could, for example, now activate this one, destroy this one and another uh, another back row here, and this one would then trigger and destroy another card on the field. And this one, obviously, in the battle phase, will destroy another card on the field. So now linking further doesn't really make sense. We could, if you have the ability, go into a unicorn if you need to spin something else, but this will cost you a lot of bodies. So let's go into the battle phase. And now, for example, this one, let, let's say the, the let's say the Rakia battles over something, like over, over any monster and destroys it. Then obviously you would uh, once again be able to trigger this one, destroy another card on the field. And now that the Rakia has battled, um, though I have put myself in a situation where the Rakia is not useful, uh, actually, um, what you would optimally want to achieve if you can manage so is to have one of the other um, little Unchained monsters still on the field. So either the Aruha or the Sharama, which we have not yet used. And then you could now, I just show you this, right? Also, so, so I attack with something else. Let's say this is an Aruha that I have not yet used. Then I could in the battle phase now destroy this Aruha and summon a fresh Unchained monster from the deck. In this case, I obviously can't because this one doesn't summon if I destroy it. And as you just saw here, you also have the ability, once something gets destroyed, this is why Rakea is so nice, to then once again use Yama and resummon, for example, the Unchained Soul of Anguish, which has 2,400 attack, and you have even more attack on the field. And then, as I obviously already said, uh, this would once again trigger, and we could just, in this case, kill our opponent. But you can see, I think you can see how you can, how you have a lot of like like interaction points in your deck that you can use to break your opponent's board, and then you have a lot of attack points that you can even make more effective by using the Rakia in the battle phase by summoning another Unchained monster um, by destroying one of your Unchained monsters that already is attacked, and then you also have your Lord of Yama in the grave that can summon another monster. That can still attack to the field so you might be able to understand that it's not really hard to kill your opponent with this deck let me just now show you the griffin lock combo if you ever want to do this combo all right let me now show you the griffin combo here uh, we will start with uh, the chamber setting the chamber and now activating our red dog keep in mind this can also be achieved with just the tour guide normal summon but let's just use the red dog here it doesn't really matter basically the same and only saves us the normal summon which doesn't make a difference you will now summon uh, the bluest of dogs uh, the blue dog and now as you might already no, we are going into the armor, which is what's happening all the time at the beginning of the Unchained combo. Uh, we are going 1-2 uh, as you are used to. We are searching the Aruha, as uh, that might not surprise you at this point. Now you have seen a lot of combos. We are setting the different trap, the one that we have not yet activated. Now we are going to add the Arua. Obviously, you could also not add the Arua because we still have the normal summon, but why would you do that? Then next thing, obviously, like basically in every combo line, we go Arua, destroy, summon the Arua, and then uh, like in the other lines, we are summoning the Shar Arma. Now it differs a bit. We will go use the Shar Arma. We can reset one of our traps. Let's, for example, I don't know. We will end up on with Blue Dog in the grave. So let's reset this one because we will be able to resummon the Blue Dog. And now we are destroying the Aruha. Aruha then activates and we will summon Rakia here, which we have never summoned in another combo line. Next thing we are going to do is use Rakia's destruction effect to destroy the Saarama. We now activate Saarama, which is now able to summon this guy to the field. Next thing we are going to do, we don't need to activate this at this point, we need the blue dog back onto the field, which we can destroy Rakia. Rakia can still summon, remember. Uh, we are going uh, this one, then Rakia can activate and summon something to the board. You can use up another Aruha or another Sharama, doesn't really matter. Um, now we are going into the blue dog with these here. Mm, put him here and then we are going to make the target from the underworld, which we need in this combo and we will put this here and next thing we are going to do is activate tour guides effect we will discard one card and special summon a feed monster let's uh, resummon the lord of yama here this is important to use her not a different one because we need the link to aspect of her 
And now we can go into the Gryphon and the reason why we made it like this is that we can place the Gryphon here and not have to place the Gryphon up here. Because remember the Gryphon says that monsters that are special summoned cannot activate their effects only they can only activate their effects if they are linked and if we put him here then obviously our opponent has one zone that he can just place monsters in that can then activate their effect but by placing him here he, our opponent cannot use our griffin's uh, forward arrow uh, to activate special summon monsters effect uh, this is why we are placing him here and now we can also activate mm, he can reset one of our traps uh, or we first have to discard let's i don't know discard this one and then we can reset reset the other one right would make sense because then we have both on the field and then we can also draw a card <laughs> this is actually a very nice hand by the way but we are, what we can then also do obviously we pass over to our opponent and then let's say in the draw phase for example because we have reset this right we could go this and resummon the unchained soul of rage which now you have another option to interrupt your opponent obviously i should have kept one of these in hand if i want to make and me unicorn because you need one discard keep that in mind but yeah our opponent is now unable to use the effect of special summon monsters that are not linked and we don't uh, offer him any link arrows so he will have to link himself but that's quite nice because now that we have the rage on the field and also the the other trap that can destroy if our opponent ever manages to make a link to here then we can obviously just use rage this is a special summon monster um, uh, at the end and we can just uh, get it away so that once again our opponent cannot do that but you could obviously just imperm this or even image or whatever so in my opinion the basic classic combo ending you up on the dd wave king and the rage is better than this one but in specific matters where there are a lot of decks um, that want to use uh, like little guys that cannot run over the griffins 2-5 attack um, and do not really link a lot this can be very very nice in just winning you the game if your opponent uh, does not have uh, infinite impermanence so i think this is everything that i wanted to show you we are at the end of the guide if you have any further questions please let me know in the comments if you like this video please let me know in the comments let me know your thoughts if you like my videos please consider subscribing hitting the thumbs up and the notification bell to never miss out on videos i will basically make guides for every big deck that comes out here if i play it for some decks i do not make any guides uh, but you can always request them if you want awesome that you were here until this point learning with me together i hope you learned a lot of stuff and we will see each other in the next one